The U.S. Energy Information Administration published the winter fuels outlook for the upcoming months, and their forecast is grim. Half of Americans use natural gas to heat their homes, and they are projected to pay about 30% higher energy prices this winter compared to last. Depending on weather and demand, Americans could be paying almost, some estimates, 55 to 60% more to heat their homes and businesses than they were last year. Those that will be most affected by these outrageous energy prices will be low-income wage earners and those on fixed incomes, like our senior citizens. I would ask unanimous consent to include uh, the report into the record. Without objection. Uh, Mr. Crabtree, as a welder, what was your experience uh, when uh, you learned and when the Keystone Pipeline was shut down? And uh, do you know how many of your fellow uh, uh, em employees, uh, workers lost their jobs? Well, at the time when the pipeline was shut down, it was in the early stages of construction, so it, it wasn't a lot. It's the fact that there were been 11,000 uh, union members working had that project been completed. But I know since uh, the new administration has uh, taken uh, about 80% of our members were without work during peak construction season this year. Wow. How does that make you feel that the President of the United States said that you can't build a pipeline here in America but allows the Russians to operate their Nord Stream Team 2 pipeline? Uh, well, it was definitely frustrating to say the least. That's. <laughs> I can't imagine. Um, and, and, you know, you've, you've worked on pipelines and, and you know, you're, you're, you're welding and so forth. Um, you know, looking at the Nord Stream Team 2 pipeline, uh, do you believe that those four pipelines like that are better protecting our environment or better constructed than ones that we would build here in America, like the Keystone XL? No, no, absolutely not. You know, I'm a member of a union and we take the utmost pride in the construction and uh, the, the quality of work we put out. There's uh, there's plenty of projects here in the United States that could have been providing that same natural gas and uh, putting Americans to work. But instead, uh, we're letting uh, Russia take that. And I, I would think that you and, and our fellow Americans, with the skills that you have, can construct a much safer and a much better pipeline than anybody else in the world. Uh, that's the absolute truth. Like I said, we take a lot of pride in the work we do. Absolutely. Uh, uh, there's no question that vital conservation efforts should be an American priority. It should also not be controversial to say that an all of the above domestic energy approach is good for our country. We cannot turn a blind eye to the realities of energy demand and the inability of renewables alone to heat our homes or fuel our vehicles and power our lives. The United States is already producing energy more cleanly and more efficiently than nations like Russia or China. Uh, would any of the witnesses like to speak on the ways in which American-made energy is already innovating without far-fetched government mandates? Congressman, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to that. Uh, you know, one of the greatest breakthroughs in technology in the last two decades in energy has been the ability to marry up two technologies which the industry had already used, which is directional drilling and hydraulic fracturing, which has allowed this country to become the leader in oil and gas production in the world once again after decades of decline. Uh, and so that's what's enabled the reductions in emissions uh, that have been cited earlier today, greater than a dozen countries combined around the world. It's what's reduced um, criteria pollutants in, in our economy and in our cities. And, um, and it's just one of many examples uh, of the innovation that goes on by the incredibly talented women and men in this industry across all the companies represented here today and many, many others who are uh, also part of a great American treasure, which is our energy economy. Th thank you. I appreciate that. Uh the, the other thing I, I would like to say is uh, no, knowing that, uh, and, you know, looking at what our great workers do in America and, and uh, so on, uh, China has pledged to achieve net zero emissions by 2060. I mean, do we really believe, is there anybody here that really believes that's a serious proposal? I mean, they're building more coal-fired plants now as we speak. You know, they're, they're increasing energy in, in coal and so on. 
I, I just think I would I would really think that if, if we think that's a serious proposal, we take a second look at it. Thank you, and I yield back. 